Good morning, Alain. Uh, thank you very much for taking our time out from your presidential election campaign and for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm always eager to remain visible in the world of tourism. So, Alain, you're, uh, you're not a newcomer to tourism. You're a long-standing uh, former minister of tourism. You uh, are still president of the African Tourism Board. And, of course, I think one of the only former tourism ministers running for the president of a country. So, so you know the issue very well. And we are talking about biodiversity and tourism and the symbiotic relationship between biodiversity and tourism. So, so maybe I can start by asking you, in a, in a biodiversity hotspot, like the Seychelles, 115 islands of the archipelago, a sensitive ecosystem, how do you balance tourism and biodiversity conservation? I think Seychelles has played its cards very close to its chest, but always thinking of the future. We know that whatever we do, and that has been key, a key element of my uh, portfolio when I was running the Ministry of Tourism, was to see how we make it long term, but also how we make it sustainable. If it is not sustainable, tourism today will bring money to some developers, but the people and the country will get very little because it will die very fast. So we had this to play with, and we knew that whatever we did, we had to think of the long-term benefits. So biodiversity is what comes true. After we've looked at tourism, the portfolio of tourism for any minister of tourism must be that you look at what you have, you manage it, and you ensure that the people and the country benefit on the long term. So my understanding is tourism generates roughly 50% direct and indirect of, of GDP for Seychelles, one in every four jobs. Even more than that. Even more than that, because in Seychelles, we can easily say, what is not tourism? If you look at the cottage industries, handicrafts and so on, it is tourism. If you look at agriculture, at the end of the day, the biggest source of income for farmers is agriculture. COVID arrived. And COVID showed reality to Seychelles and to every Seychelles world that without tourism, no one survives because you depend then on handouts from the government because everything revolves around the hotel or hospitality industry, which is why today Seychelles is better place to tell the world, let's cherish our tourism industry, let's work with the tourism operators, and let us believe that this people's industry that is called tourism is there for everybody because everybody then benefits from it. So the shell boasts 320 species of, of corals. It's bursting with some of the most unique, pristine biodiversity, but also many endemic and endangered endemic species. What's the role of regulation in, in the blue economy to make sure you preserve this for, for future generations? This is seeing what we have as unique selling point, which is the, the coral, the sea life, the underwater life, whatever you call it. We've always sold Seychelles with its white sandy beaches, lapped by warm, clear blue seas. This is what you make picture perfect opportunities. But when you go deeper inside, we know that makes the coral, the, the, the white sandy beaches, is the coral life that keeps it alive and that keeps replenishing it as it moves along. We know we have to safeguard, which is why now the marine, marine park authorities have put buoys for people to anchor their yachts with it, and it doesn't put anchors everywhere. We know fully well that managing this very fragile ecosystem that makes the Seychelles get the name of a perfect holiday destination, we know that spear fishing has been banned for years. We are still at the end of our British colonial era when spear fishing was banned. But we also know now the Seychellois themselves, the fishing industry, have come forward and said, we must have limits on the sizes of fish to catch. We must have limits of where to catch and to move the, the areas at random so that you don't overfish a certain area. Now we have a big challenge, obviously. It's the tuna fishing industry that is pre predominantly Europe. And we know full well that we need to manage that even more. Because when you deplete the stock of fish, not only food security for us, but the enjoyment of our fishing enthusiasts that come here for big game fishing. 
We know catching a big tuna on a small rod is an adventure for any would-be enthusiast of the fishing fraternity. So we know that we have to protect it. Protecting it by regulation, yes, but protecting it by involving the younger generation to see themselves in it and to believe in it is the way forward. So can I ask you a final question? Tourism revenue is down because of a COVID pandemic shutdown. How did that impact your conservation efforts? And how do you recover? Well, the efforts have stayed because the people are behind it. The people of Seychelles believe that we need to protect what we have. If we are good custodians of what we have been blessed with, we will have this for years to come. Yes, the tourism revenue is down and very down. It is actually dwindled into very, very small intake. But we are hoping now with the new measures that can come into force that Seychelles tourism industry can be one of the first to recover because we've had no mortality from the COVID-19 episode. We've had good isolation centers set into place. There are good measures put at the airport, even too rigid, some, some people in the industry will say, and I support the rigidness of it maybe is gone too far. We need to open up, but we need to do the trials and the testing before people even get here. And having dedicated people that looks at it at the eight or nine airports that fly directly to Seychelles, we can then manage it. And I really believe, let the people of Seychelles manage this, this epidemic that has ruined their lives. They will grab it, they will make it work, and they will run with it. Thank you very much. If I take back one message from, from my conversation with you, it's that we cannot address this in silos. It's about communities, because they, they bear the opportunity costs for protecting wildlife and species. Uh, which we sell in the tourism industry. So we must look after communities. Government has a role, and then industry has a key role. Totally, Sean. T togetherness. Togetherness is the key word. And when we, and I advocated a lot, the PPP, private sector partnership, you see, no one has the ultimatum belief that this is his or hers. It belongs to the country, it belongs to the people, it belongs to the world community at large. And together we can make the difference to safeguard what we have. Well, thank you very much once again for taking time out from, from your busy schedule. Um, and uh, best of luck for the final few weeks of, of a presidential campaign. Thank you very much, Sean. Much appreciated to have me on air. Thank you.